In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a realistic plastic bag using Cinema 4D's cloth simulation and then make it crumble. So without further ado, let's go. All right, we're inside Cinema 4D where I've got the three stages of modeling laid out here and how to create this plastic bag here at the end, which is what we want to achieve. If I turn off the shading just for a moment, you can see better of what's going on. So the first step we would have to do is to create a simple model like this from a box, which I'm going to show you in a moment, and then apply a subdivision on top of it. And then lastly, apply our simulations onto our bag. So let me show you how to model this bag first. All right, so let's start off with going to our modeling tab and make a cube. And I'm going to make this a similar size to what we already have. Just rotate that. And yeah, something like this should work. Now I'm going to make the cube editable by pressing C on the keyboard. And then I'm going to make sure the surface selection is selected and select our loop slash path cut. And I'm just going to make a cut in the middle. You can press shift on the keyboard to make sure it locks onto the middle and make a cut. And I'm also going to add a cut here and this will become our seam where we have the fixed points at the top later. And now we're going to manipulate the shape of the cube to make it into this bag here. So let's go to our selection tool, line tool, and we'll just select these edges. Press T to go to scale mode and I'm just gonna scale this down. And then I'm going to go to our point selection tool, select these points here. Uh, again, we want to scale it down and then press E for move to and move it up. So the next thing we want to do is to add these loop cuts next to the edges of the bag. And the purpose of this is to maintain the edges when we add this subdivision surface onto it. And just to quickly demonstrate what I mean, I'm going to now add this subdivision surface to it. And as you can see, this is definitely not what we want. But if we see what happens, uh, to this bag, when we add the loop cuts at, on the edges, I'm just going to turn on the subdivision surface here. And you can see that these edges are now maintained. I'm not going to go into the theory of subdivision surface right now because that's outside the scope of this video. But just know that this is uh, a standard procedure for subdivision modeling. All right, so let's turn off our subdivision surface for now and go back to our polygon mode. And I'm going to go back to our loop cut. And a little trick here we, that we could use to ensure that the two sides we cut are going to be even, we can increase our quantize step to, let's say, 50. And then while holding shift on the keyboard, you'll see that it's going to snap our cut onto a division of 50. So we just need to select our point at the end here and then do the same on the other side and now we have our first set of edge cuts and if we turn off our subdivision here we're just going to repeat the same process for all the edges here so i'm just going to speed this part up for now
All right, now that we've added all our edge cuts, if we turn back on our subdivision, you can see that our shape is now maintained. So the cloth simulation in CVOD works best when we have a high amount of polygons like this. So clicking on the subdivision surface, I'm going to increase our subdivision to five. And now let's create a archive node. and save a copy of this model in case we want to revisit it later. And I'm just going to press C on the keyboard to make this editable and right click. I'm going to add a cloth tag onto it. And what I'm going to do now is to go to our rectangle selection, go to our front view, or left view in this case. And while having the point mode selected, I'm going to select the top points here, like so. So this is our seam. And then while on the cloth selection, go to dresser, and I'm going to set it as our fixed points. And now, whatever simulation we apply to this bag, it's only going to affect the rest of these points, but not the fixed points. So let's add a material onto our bag. And for this project, I just used the one available in the uh, C4D asset browser, which is under materials, plastic. And if you scroll down, you could find our plastic wrap here. And since I already have it in our project, I'm just going to drag it onto our layer here. And I'm just going to rename this layer plastic bag. And if we turn on Redshift Render View, this is what it looks like. And of course, I don't have any uh, backdrop lights or camera setup because the focus of this tutorial is not on rendering, but on simulations. But I just wanted you to know that the asset browser itself has a good plastic wrap material, so you didn't need to make one yourself. So let's get back onto our standard window. So now is a good time to talk about our project settings. If I press Control D on our keyboard, you will go into project settings here. And if we click simulations, go to scene, I have my gravity set to zero because I don't want my bag to fall down due to gravity. And I also have my scene settings set to 50 millimeters. So for the scene setting, you want to set it to around the size of your object in order to make the simulation more accurate. And also on the simulation tab, I have my subset to 40, which is actually quite high. And I've also added some iterations, smoothing iterations, and I've increased my damping to 50%, as well as adding some collision passes. And that is because I was working with a fairly complex object with sharp edges. And I found that when these numbers were lower, I would run into problems with the cloth penetrating the legs. So if you're working with a fairly complex object and you're running into problems with the cloth penetrating the object, you can try increasing these numbers, which will make the simulation calculation more accurate. But of course, as a trade-off, the calculation will be longer. By the way, if you don't know what any of these terms mean, and I don't blame you, uh, I would go to help, show help, go to simulation, simulation scene, simulation. And I would suggest that you read through all of these description. It's going to be better than any explanation I can give you. And for me, this has really helped me in doing this project. So let's start our simulation. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to simulate with this chair because it's going to be too complex and the calculations will be too long. So I'm going to use a simple sphere. So I'm going to first isolate our object here and bring up a sphere. And I'm just going to make this size appropriate and bring it up to where our bag is. I think something like this would work well. And I'm going to increase the 
segments and make this sphere editable. And I'm going to add a collider tag onto it. Now we need to figure out how to wrap our plastic bag around our sphere. And in order to do that, let's go to our animation tab, have our sphere selected, go to coordinates, and let's keyframe our scale. Let's unfold all. And while having these keyframes selected, hold control on the keyboard and drag it out to, let's say, to 40th frame. And highlighting the original keyframes, let's make that key value zero. So it's going to expand into our plastic bag. So now if we go to our cloth tag, go to cache, we're going to cache the scene and I'm just going to let it calculate. Okay, now the scene has finished caching. If we drag our timeline, you'll see that our plastic bag now wraps around our sphere, which is what we want. So now what we want to do is go to a frame that we're happy with the appearance of, and we're going to right-click our plastic bag and set current state to object. And we're going to archive our plastic bag. And now if we drag our timeline to zero, you'll see that our bag has stayed at that exact stage. So what we want to do now is go clicking on our sphere. We want to delete our keyframes so that it stays at that endpoint. All right, now let's figure out how to shrink this plastic bag. Firstly, I'm going to extend my timeline to 120. So the animation runs a bit longer and I'm going to clear my cache on my cloth tag, clear cache, and I'm going to go to my balloon tab, turn it on, and we want to adjust the overpressure number. So the way this works is that any number over one will make the balloon inflate and any number under one will make the balloon deflate. So I'm going to make it 0.5 because we want this to deflate. And I'm going to set the expansion time to something a bit longer, let's say 60 frames and going back to cache, I'm going to cache the scene and see what happens. All right, the simulation has finished caching and I'm just going to drag my timeline across to see the results. And as you can see, our plastic bag has now shrink wrapped around our sphere. And if we're not happy with the amount of shrink wrapping, we could always clear the cache and go back to balloon and adjust this number. Uh, so let's try to see what happens if we half this to 0.25 and press cache again. All right, so let's just check out what it looks like at 0.25. And as you can see, it has a lot more shrink wrapping than before. And you may notice these kind of jagged edges and a quick fix to that is to just add a subdivision surface onto it. And we're going to get smoother edges on the, on the surface. Lastly, you might be wondering how I added that cardboard sign at the top. Um, let's just bring back our original model. Turn off the lines so we can see it properly. So I modeled it as if it would be in real life. I had a surface that bends around to create a fold and, and then I added thickness to it and the plastic seam sits in between these two uh, cardboards. So here we can see it easier here. And then I just added that texture onto it. And then I just use a bow operation to cut out the shapes. So hopefully that was helpful. As always, happy to connect over Instagram if you want to ask any questions or just say hi. And I hope you have a good day. Happy creating.